Hi, this is Josh Marshall from TPM Media. It's Monday, September 3rd, 2007, Labor Day. You know, we're getting a, we got a lot of response to last week's episode, last Thursday's episode about the muck gap. Now, that's the continuing Republican dominance in scandal, muck, and general evil doing, despite the fact that the Republican Party is now in the minority in Washington. Now, some of the feedback we got was from Republicans who are just having a hard time coming to grips with the party's predilection for bribery and bathroom sex. And they were wondering about, you know, why didn't we talk about Alan Mollahan or this person or that person, you know, kind of failed candidates for dog catcher in Minnesota and stuff like that. On the Democratic side, we had a lot of people saying, what about Duke Cunningham? What about Jerry Lewis? What about this person and that person? So we're going to go through our methodology and even touch upon a couple names that if we were going to do the show again, we might actually include. So point one, to analyze the continuing Republican muck dominance post-2006 election, we're of course dealing with scandals that really happened in 2007. So these are either scandals that started in 2007 or in which there were substantial new pieces of information. So for instance, in the case of John Doolittle, he's been under a cloud going back for a year and a half, but it was only this year when his home was raided, so it was clear that he was actually the target of a serious federal criminal investigation. Similar uh, case applies to Duke Cunningham. That's old news. Nothing has happened in 2007. Jerry Lewis, the case continues, but really nothing substantial has happened in that investigation in 2007. Alan Mullahan, the Democrat from West Virginia, again, there seems to be an ongoing investigation, but nothing new has happened since 2006. Of course, uh, Mark Foley, that's old news. So in a lot of cases, we just didn't include uh, evildoers and, and crooked politicians who haven't created any new news in the era of the new Democratic Congress. Now, there were even a few cases like Brent Wilkes, the guy who bribed Duke Cunningham, and Tommy Contagianis, another one who bribed Duke Cunningham, who were actually indicted this year, but we, we decided to throw the Republican Party a bone on that one. It's really pretty much old news, so we didn't include them. Now, a number of people did mention the case of Bob Filner, the Democratic congressman from San Diego, who only a couple weeks ago was, he's been charged with assaulting a, an airline employee. He shoved an airline employee trying to get into an employee-only section of Washington National, Reagan National Airport in Washington, D.C. So people said, well, this is, this is a, a big case. Why wasn't that included? Well, we didn't include that because it's actually seemed fairly similar to the case of Chris Shays, who last month uh, screamed at and manhandled a Capitol police officer in the rain outside of, outside of the Capitol. So in both these cases, this really seemed like too small a time for us to include. I mean, what it really comes down to for us is if you're having sex in a bathroom with someone you've never met before, we can work with that. If, if you shove someone, you know, shove an employee in an airport or something, it just, it just doesn't, it doesn't do it for us. So that's the answer. Now, by and large, we tried to keep to federal office holders. So again, no deputy under assistant dog catcher from Florida, no failed candidate for state legislature and stuff like that. We did make a few exceptions. There were actually two cases that people brought up that I think we probably should include in the list. The first is Governor Gibbon out there in Nevada, who uh, during his, he was a member of Congress, ran successfully, became governor of Nevada. He's now being, he's a target of a, a pretty serious investigation stemming from his a, apparent corrupt acts while he was a member of Congress. We're not going to go into the alleged assault on the woman in the, uh, in the garage after hours, that's, that's sort of a separate matter. But at least on the basis of the corruption investigation into him, he probably added the list. So that's another Republican. The other is Governor Elliot Spitzer of New York. Now, just recently, it was found out that members of his office had used the state police force to try to sully the good name of Senator Bruno, who's a senior Republican in Albany these days. Now, Bruno doesn't have a particularly good name to start with. He has his own uh, corruption problems that, that have been investigated. But this seems like a legitimate inclusion. So if we had to do it over again, we would probably include both Governors Gibbon and Spitzer from Nevada and New York into our list. Okay, we're going to be back in a second with a little more info for this Labor Day episode of TPM TV.
You know, starting tomorrow, the 2008 election cycle really begins in earnest. We're going to start building up towards the primaries and then the conventions and then the actual election itself. Now, we know a lot of you are hardcore political junkies and you're going to be going to political events and uh, events with candidates and everything under the sun. Take your video cameras because we want you to shoot events that happen. It doesn't have to be a macaca moment sort of stuff, but just what's happening out on the campaign trail. Send the stuff in. We'll incorporate it into our news coverage here at TPM TV. So, uh, have a good Labor Day. If you use a public bathroom, just keep to yourself. And we will be back tomorrow. I'm Josh Marshall from TPM Media, and we'll talk to you Tuesday.